Over the next few videos, we're going to be seeing how you can build a very simple test runner and giving you an idea of how these tools work under the hood. Over here on the left, you can see the API we're going to be designing. We're going to have the classic describe and it functions, and you can have them nested as many times as you like. In this case, I have two nested describes, so two nested suites, and then I have a spec inside of here, or a test inside of here rather. Finally, we have another suite down here with another test. Just to clarify, this entire file is called a spec, describe blocks are called suites, and it blocks are called tests. Other than this very simple API, we're going to also try and have some more advanced features. For example, I'd like to support describe.only and it.only, so we can only execute very specific suites or tests. I'd like to have before each and after each for some setup and teardown. And also we should make sure everything is going to work with a sync await, exactly how you would expect. We are going to make this one assertion library agnostic. I'm using the must assertion library. However, you can use whichever one you would like. Finally, I'd like to have a customizable reporter. Over here, you can see my reporter. We're going to show each of the suites and we're going to indent them correctly. We're going to show some nice colors about passing and failing. And at the end of all the specs, we're going to show a summary. It shows all the fails, expected and received values. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is implement this in a very naive and simple way. It's going to work for very simple use cases, but it's not going to scale for some of the more complex cases, and we're going to see why. Let's head over to our runner file and start implementing this. So the first thing we're going to do is define describe and it. So let's go ahead and start off with describe. It's going to be a function that takes two arguments. The first is going to be the title, and the second is going to be the handler. This is going to be the function that we execute. A very simple way to achieve this would just be doing a console log of title and then go ahead and call handler. We're going to do exactly the same thing for it as well. So let's go ahead and define that. And finally, I'm going to just go ahead and do module exports. We're keeping this one as simple as possible. So I'm just going to use regular Node.js module syntax. Let's go ahead and try this one out. If I jump over here and try and run it, which is by saying node and passing in my demo file, it is going to execute everything. If we scroll up here, we can see this is kind of working. You can see we're saying demo top level, that's going to be the very first suite. We then have the nested suite. We then go ahead and log the test, which is works. We execute it. We do the same thing for demo two and works. This one is actually going to fail. Obviously foo is not equal to foo, and we're going to raise an assertion error. This is generally how these assertion libraries work. They're going to raise an error and give you some more information. For example, the expected result and the actual result. This is a very naive implementation. It does kind of work, but it does have a few problems. Namely, we haven't got any way to do, for example, a better reporter. What I'd like to do is indent these, and that's going to be very difficult. The reason is this is currently stateless. There's no way for this it block here to know where it is being executed or inside of which suite it is being executed. Another problem is going to be implementing more advanced features like only and before each. To be able to implement this only feature, we need to do a first pass of the entire spec file to figure out which specs or which uh, suites need to be executed. And that's not going to work with our current implementation since we're executing things top down as we encounter them. What we need to do is a first pass, collect all the irrelevant information, then go ahead and execute everything. So that is what we are going to do. Let's go ahead and try and rethink this a little bit. What we're going to do instead is use the event emitter pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and import event emitter and we're going to use a module called events. This is basically the Node.js event emitter, but it's also going to work in a browser. So I could potentially use my test runner in a browser or in a Node.js environment. Now that we have that, instead of actually executing these and console logging, what we're going to do is event and emit, collect the relevant information and then figure out what to do afterwards. Let's start off with describe. Inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and event, emit that event. So we're going to have to create a new emitter. I'm just going to call my one emitter for now. And then we're going to say emitter.emit and we're going to emit a new event. This one's going to be add suite. Remember, describe represents a suite and it represents a test. We're going to pass in a few arguments here. In this case, I'm just going to pass in the title and the handler. And we're going to figure out how to execute that one later on. We're going to do exactly the same thing down here for it and pass in the same arguments. In this case, I'm going to add a test instead of a suite. Next, we need to figure out what to do with these. What I'm going to do is create a new map to keep track of everything. I'm going to call this one handlers for now. And that's just going to be a new map. So handlers is equal to new map. How this is going to work is something like this. 
we're going to have an ID in here representing either a suite or a test, and it's going to map to a suite or a test, and we're going to have a number of these. They will have to have some relationship between each other, and after we have this completed map, we're going to go ahead, traverse it, and do the correct behaviors. So the first thing we're going to do is handle this emitted event from describe. I'll jump down here and just say emitter.on, responding to the event. In this case, it's going to be on add a suite. We need to figure out what to do. Let's go ahead and grab both the title and the handler in here, and then figure out the correct behavior. What we'd like to do is just go ahead and add this to our, our handlers. So for now, I'm just going to say handlers.set. We're going to have to create an ID. Luckily, I have a, a module prepared for that one right now. I'm just going to go ahead and import it right now. It's going to come from a file called utils.js and it's going to be UUID v4. It's just going to give us a very uh, simple UUID to use to keep track of our, our suites and our tests. Let's go ahead and create a new one. It's just going to be UUID v4. We're going to pass it in here. Then we're going to pass in some sort of data structure. I'm going to pass in the ID, the title, and in this case, that's all we're going to do for now. What we need to now do is execute the handler as well. The reason for this is I'm going to say execute this describe block. We're going to go ahead and keep track of this test here. So the name of the test or the suite. And then we're going to execute the contents and repeat that process iteratively down until we hit a test. Remember, you can have multiple suites uh, nested inside of each other, but you cannot have multiple tests nested. So we know once we've hit a test, we're at the very bottom layer. Okay, what we're going to do now we've done that is make sure we're executing this. So I'm just going to go ahead and say handler and call this one. In this example, if we had another describe block, it would go ahead, emit a new event and repeat the same process again. Let's just go ahead and give this one a try and see if it's working. We need some way to see what happens at the end of all this. So what I'm going to do is create a new function down here and I'm going to call this one run. And this is just going to give us some debugging and diagnostic information to see what is going on. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and console log handlers. Finally, we need to respond to this somehow. Uh, just to keep things simple, I'm just going to export it for now. And this should give us a good idea of what is going on. We'll just head back here, jump down to the bottom, and I'm just going to call run here, just so we have an idea of what is going on. Ideally, we won't have to do this uh, ourselves. It'll be done automatically. We'll come to that later on. Let's go ahead now and give this a try and see what happens. If we jump over here, clear the console and run this again, we should see something a little bit more interesting. I'm actually getting an error here. It's saying uh, missing initializer when destructuring. I think I've made a typo up here. Yes, it should just be like this. Let's go ahead and try again. And this is a little bit more interesting. We have a map here. We have this huge UID and it's mapping to that top level suite. We then have the next one, demo nested suite, and then we have demo two. And all three of those are corresponding to our three suites. We have the top level one here, we have the nested one, and we have demo two. Let's go ahead and make sure we're tracking the it blocks as well, so the tests as well as the suites. Just to uh, get that working, I'm going to copy this one and head down here and create a new copy of this uh, event. Instead of responding to add suite, it's now going to be add test. We're going to do something very similar here, passing in exactly the same thing. But in this case, we do not want to execute the handler, we're just going to keep track of it. Finally, we need some way to differentiate between tests and suites. What I'm going to do is have a type. In this case, we're going to have a type of suite. And down here, we are going to have a type of, let's say, test. Let's go ahead and try this one out and see what happens. And this is working as we expected. It is a little bit difficult to read with these UIDs, but let's make it a bit bigger and just run it one more time. You can see we are getting four entries here, or actually five, and that is what I was expecting. We have five entries over here, describe, describe, it, describe and it. And we're actually keeping track of those correctly. We have the type, we have the title, and for the tests, we're going to also have the handler, which is something we're going to execute on our second pass. Uh, this is a good place to leave this lecture. In the next one, we're going to see how we can set up a bit of a relationship between the different suites and tests, because at the moment, there's no relationship here. We have no idea which suites belong to which tests and vice versa.